Hi there, it's Karen at Corrie Paper Crafts here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in central Scotland. Today's project is this little tent gift box here. It's a cardstock gift box inside a designer series paper sleeve. And this one I made using um, mint macaron cardstock with the Garden Lane DSP which has most of our greens in it um, and just as a reminder I'll very quickly let you see these absolutely gorgeous papers which as you can see I've been using quite a lot that's the paper that I used for this box I'm planning a gift box I think with this because it's going to be a square box and I like the square shapes on there. Um, I just love this paper, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, just very quickly, let me see the rest. Absolutely beautiful. And the greens that are in it whoops are garden green mint macaron mossy meadow pear pizzazz and soft sea foam and the only other color that's in there is whisper white so because it's summer and we've had a few really unusually hot days in Scotland, it is Scotland after all, I thought I'd be a bit tropical and use the tropical chic um, stamp set and dies to make this as well. So if I just bring in that stamp set to let you see. This is it here, tropical chic which isn't a new stamp set this year, it was new last year. Um, and in terms of the stamps that I've used for this project, I've used the little thank you. I've cut, stamped and cut out this leaf, this leaf and this leaf. I had tried it with a little flower to add a pop of colour um, and it looked okay but um, I wasn't... I wasn't too keen so I decided to go with the, the thank you instead and then that way you can just pop anything you like inside the box. It's really quite big. It measures um, three and a half inches wide and it's one and a half inches deep and I think three inches tall. Yes. So the box inside actually does hold quite a lot but remember it's deeper at the bottom than it is at the top because it pinches closed at the top so you can't fill it right to the top or you won't get it in your sleeve. So I'm going to show you how I made it and I'm going to show you all the things that you need to make it. So if I pop those off to the side um, I'll just quickly bring in the tropical um, dyes as well which I absolutely love. These are those here and I'm thinking I've got a bit of an idea in my head for using this as well so um, watch this space. So I'm going to show you what you need to make the box. So you'll need a piece of cardstock for the box inside which measures 10.5 inches by 4.5 inches. For the DSP belly band you'll need a piece of DSP measuring 8 inches by 3 and a half inches and I've already stamped and cut out my die shapes as well and I've popped some mini dimensionals on the back of my thank you already. It's not ideal to stamp and die cut and sugar the tripod um, so I've already done that ahead of time. So if I bring in my scoreboard I'll show you how to score it. Um, uh, I'm looking for my take your pick tool. Here we are. So you want to score at a uh, half an inch, then at two inches, then at um, five and a half. I had to think there, and at seven. And before you turn it round, you want to put a little tick mark at one and a quarter inches and at six and a quarter inches. And that's halfway across these narrower sections here, which are going to be the sides 
which you're going to score triangular marks on and that gives you the little bit that pops in at the side. Turn it round clockwise and score again at one and a half inches and that's all the scoring you need to do. So taking my scoreboard out of the way and then straightening up my grid paper again because I just moved it with my scoreboard. Oops. I'm just going to fold and burnish on all these score lines. Just making sure it's all straight. And I probably should have put in my triangular score lines before I did all my, my burnishing, but that's okay. I'll do them before I score the bottom. So just looking at where my tick marks are on the top, I'm going to start in the bottom corner here and score up and down towards that tick mark on both sides on both of the narrow uh, panels. Don't have to be too deep because you'll still be able to fold them anyway as long as you've put some sort of score mark on. There they are. So I'll just fold that last fold mark there or score rather and I'm just going to give these another quick burnish since I scored down to the corners there. And so you've got something that looks like that. So ignore these triangular marks for now. I'm going to grab my scissors. And on the bottom part here, um, you want to remove this narrow section here, so I'm going to cut up that score line just to that horizontal score mark, notch it a little bit there and notch it a little bit there and then I'm going to cut straight up these score lines here. And I'm going to notch these tabs here because these are the ones that are going to be on the inside of my box. It doesn't matter if they're not equal because nobody's really going to see them. They're going to be on the inside of the box. And then I'm just going to take a tiny notch out of either side of the longer panels as well. And if you've seen my other video, you'll know that I'm not the best at doing that last notch on the far left. I have no idea why, so I always turn it around. So now you have something that looks like that. So before you do anything else, just give those triangular folds a little burnish, which will help make your box fold in at the sides once you put it all together. And then using tearing tape or because my tearing tape's finished and I don't have any new tearing tape, use some contraband double sided tape <laughs> and add some to this narrow flap at the side, the half inch flap close to that score line because that's what's going to join your box together and then just add a little bit on both of these tabs you don't have to but if you've seen my other videos with my boxes you know I like to make sure these don't uh, move around loose inside and then this is going to be underneath this is going to be the flap that's going to be on the outside of the box and you can always remember that it's that flap um, because it's between the two side flaps. Sorry about the noise of the wind and the blinds. It's not so nice today but it's still really really warm so I've got the window open which is just there and the wind has decided to start rattling the blinds. 
So that's all the tape on and then all I want to do now is give that a little bit of a press down before I take the backing off. So I'm going to use my paper piercer which as you'll know we don't sell at Stampin' Up! anymore unfortunately but it's still good for taking the backing off your tape and then I'm going to remove the bit on both of these flaps then I'm going to stand it up straight and just making sure that it's relatively straight bring my base over turn it round and just give that a bit of a burnish to stick down the tape on the little flaps inside and then take I can tape off of here and stick the box the bottom part down and that's my triangular box made so for the belly band all I want to do with this is turn my box round and starting at the halfway mark roughly so you don't have to measure it or anything I'm just going to pop that round and just pinch that carefully and so that I get a bit of a hook on the bottom of that to pop it around the rest of my box I'm just going to give that a bit of a burnish not fabulously straight but it's on the bottom of the box so it doesn't matter then I'm going to just pinch the top of my box together and loosely wrap that round just give it a little pinch but not fold it or burnish it in any way and then the last one again just round that bottom corner this is the same principle as the little box that I made as my table gift for on stage in April which you might have seen already but this is just a bigger version of that so now that should all fit nicely round the box and then I just need to decide where my tape's going to go and I think that there is a more invisible join so I'm going to put my tape on this edge here and um, actually I'm going to use a thinner piece just for this you could reuse um, your tearing tape which would do um, or red line tape which is another double sided tape so just along the edge here and to make sure it's not furry at the edges by tearing I'm just going to snip that with my scissors give that a press down and then wrap it round my box again um, and because the base of my box the open edge or the join is at the back here facing that way I'm going to make this join face that way as well so I'm just going to make sure that I've got a good hold of it and that it's fitted properly round and then just join it together making sure it's whoops making sure it's straight before I do there we are and that's the box made so all I did with these was I added a little bit of glue, popped them onto the box and stuck them down. And I think I'll just change the order around a little bit. So I think I'll put that leaf here <clears throat> and I'll maybe move them up a little bit. That leaf here and then the little fern in the middle and then my thank you just to change it up a bit so that's what I'm going to do so my famously nearly empty glue just add a little bit of glue on that don't need an awful lot I will put a little bit on the stock though just to hold that hold that down so I'm going to stick you here 
this time. Just hold it for a minute or two till it sticks. And then add some more glue onto this one. Pop that on <coughs> here, roughly, about there, I think. Um, the first leaf that I stuck on, I stamped using Garden Green. And this one I stamped using Granny Apple Green. That's not very central, is it, on the box, but never mind, you get the... See if I can move it across a little bit, you get the idea. Oh, I wonder. Mm, I think that'll be okay. It is a bit uneven, which I didn't really intend. And then pop some glue onto this one. Come on. Pop that just here in the middle. And then just to cover up where all the stocks join at the bottom, that's where you're going to add to your little thank you. The right way around of course. And just trying to get that centrally as well. Bring it down a little bit. Stick it on about, oops, about there I think. And the mini dimensionals on either side just help to hold it up over the top of the leaves. So that's the box made. Um, I'm not sure which one I like better in terms of the paper. I think I still like this leafy look. Um, and if I'd popped this leaf over a little bit, it probably would have looked a little bit better. I might add another leaf onto that and, and see what it looks like. I would have done it just now, but I don't have another one punched out or, or, or cut out rather. That's it. Um, pop what you like in it, sweeties or um, stationery, anything you like really. It would be big enough for some tea bags, some coffee um, with some little sugar sashes and probably little milk sashes as well. You could possibly fit um, a little UHT milk pod in there but you might have to put it in upside down so don't don't uh, burst it before you put it in um, but that's all there is to it really thanks again for dropping in if you haven't already I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel the details are down in the description bar at the bottom pop press rather on the little bell icon as well and that will make sure you get notifications of any other videos that I post. Thanks for dropping in today though and I will see you again soon. Until then take care.